Hello everyone, welcome to the Crystally Recapped channel. And now you're going to hear a short review of the movie The Cobbler. 1903. A group of wealthy people turns to the shoemaker Pinches. According to him, he has magical powers. The men show him the owner's shoes and ask him to demonstrate the magic. Pinches thinks it's strange but still agrees to work. In real time, Max turns out to be a descendant of the same cobbler. The business is passed down from generation to generation. Next door to him is a barbershop owned by Jimmy. One day Carmen comes into the barbershop. She works in the social sector, and the lives of local people are very important to her. Large corporations have started buying up buildings, but even when the residents object, they are still being kicked out. She has prepared a petition to stop this from happening again. Max is clearly not interested in these problems, but he likes Carmen, so he signs the petition. A new day comes, a man comes into the store. He asks him to shine his shoes in a rather rude manner. Max notices the watch, and the man starts bragging about his collection, which is three times more expensive than this watch. But when it comes to payment, the amount of $4 seems too much for him. Before leaving, the man gives away his shoes. The sewing machine breaks down, there was a spare machine in the basement for this case. Jimmy comes back a little later. He tells me that he told his father to sell it all, but he always refused. It's getting close to closing time, but no buyer has shown up. Max decides to put on his shoes and instantly turns into Ludlow. But when he takes off his shoes, he looks normal. Max closes the store, puts the shoes back on and puts them back on, transforming into Ludlow. The cobbler wondered what would happen when he put on another pair of shoes. This time he did not turn into a different person. Max recalls that it started after using the machine in the basement. After fixing the new pair and putting them on, Max changes his appearance. Trying to try on more shoes, he turns into a zombie because they belong to a dead man. A new day comes and a famous TV journalist comes to the store and gives him his business card. Then a strange man comes in, asks what time the barbershop is open and calls him by name before leaving. In fact, it was Max who decided to play a joke on his friend. Throughout the day, completely different shoes are brought to the store. Max wanted to feel himself in the body of a Chinese man, and to his surprise, the accent is also transmitted. A little later, Max starts eating in expensive restaurants and changes his appearance in the restroom to avoid paying for food. When he sees a man coming out of a rich house, he orders him to give him his shoes before going to bed. Max comes to his mother, and her conversation reminds him that his father's shoes were in the closet. A new day comes. A girl comes to the workshop asking to fix her friend's shoes. Max can't help but take this chance and transform into her friend. At the bar, a girl who has seen his performance approaches him. Max doesn't understand what she's talking about, so he can't make conversation. On the way home, Max miraculously notices the owner of the shoes and the number of the apartment where he lives. He calmly enters the house, not even realizing what awaits him. The whole spectacle is spoiled by the realization that the shoes cannot be removed, and Max immediately runs away. The next day, he meets Carmen again, delivering food to the elderly. She reminds him that she would be happy if Max joined their team. Max puts on his new shoes and goes to Carmen's office, but doesn't dare to speak. That same day, he fixes his father's old shoes and discovers that he is still alive. In this form, he comes to his sick mother, and they have dinner together, but the next day begins with the news of her death. Jimmy tells him not to be sad. He was a wonderful son, and if he doesn't have much money, he will help pay the bills. Max refuses, because why should he help him if he has never done anything for him? Then he goes back to work, where Ludlow is waiting for him. He behaves very rudely, just like on the first day. Max starts following him and finds out where he lives. After waiting for Ludlow to leave, Max enters the apartment. There, an angry girl accuses him of stealing money and leaves. After searching the apartment, he finds a box of weapons and even tries out a stun gun. Max has been unconscious for so long that he meets the real Ludlow at the doorway. A fight breaks out and if not for the stun gun, he would have died. Having tied Ludlow to a chair, Max asks him to tell him where he hides the watch. Ludlow does not want to answer and then a special man enters the room. He forces Ludlow to reveal his secret. Suddenly, bandits knock on the door, and they and Ludlow have to take $50,000. Max is not going to miss this opportunity and takes on a new look. 
It turns out that Ludlow is the leader of an entire gang that is going to eliminate his victim. But to their surprise, the boss asks them to stop and let Patrick go. Then they arrive at the meeting place. The woman Elaine says that if he fails, he will be in big trouble. In the apartment, Max is attacked by Ludlow. The cobbler takes off his boots, frightening Ludlow, which causes him to pierce his neck with his heel. The next day, Max goes to the police station to report the crime. The detective thinks Max's story is strange, but to make sure he is telling the truth, he asks him to take him to the murder scene. To Max's surprise, the body has disappeared, as well as the bag with his belongings. When he returns to work, he notices his belongings and wants to return the money to the owner. Jimmy asks him to take his time. Max's father did exactly the same thing and then disappeared. If he hadn't, evil people would have come after his family. Max doesn't understand why he didn't tell the truth, but this story doesn't stop him from going back to Elaine and giving her the money, getting hit in the head as a reward. When he regains consciousness, he hears the bandits discussing how to set the whole neighborhood on fire, and when they turn around, they are met by zombie. The bandits immediately crash into the building. Witnesses run to help, but when they see the zombie, they immediately run away. This is the last straw and Max hides the car. It turns out that Carmen is helping people whose neighborhood is about to be burned down. He tells the girl this news and they come to Solomon's house. He thanks for the warning, but he is too old. His whole life has been spent here and let it end here. Max asks where his daughter lives and what her shoe size is so he can come and meet her in person. He asks Elaine for $100,000 and a ticket to Chicago. Elaine agrees. Later that evening, people with money knock on the door. Max asks them to take off their shoes and come inside. During this time, the shoes are stolen. An hour later, Ludlow approaches the house. One of the bandits pulls out a gun and follows him but runs into his partner, Brian. Max quickly knocks him out and calls Elaine. At this time, the real Brian is caught by a police officer and Elaine does not understand why Solomon is in the apartment, although he was in Chicago just a few minutes ago. Elaine gives him a choice, leave quietly or burn down the house, and then she will find his daughter. These words are perfect for a television program. Danny Donald asks some provocative questions on the air. Elaine tries to pretend she hasn't said anything. Danny offers to rewind the recording in case she forgot something. A few days later, the girl comes to the store and Max returns the shoes at the store's expense. Carmen comes in after her because her shoes broke. She wonders how Max managed to fool the mobsters and invites him to a romantic dinner. But before that, Max visits Ludlow's girlfriend and gives her all his money. This was a big mistake because Patrick was waiting for Ludlow at the door. As a sign of gratitude for letting him go, he is going to kill him. Suddenly, a truck crashes into the car and Max is taken to the barbershop. Jimmy sits down opposite him and asks him to eat a pickle because it will help him control his strength during the constant movement. It was he who got rid of Ludlow's body. In fact, Jimmy is not only a hairdresser, but also a shoemaker and to be more precise, Max's father. He is very sorry that he had to live away from his family, but he simply had no choice. Today is the day when Max will see his incredible treasure, the shoes of the most influential people from all over the world. All these shoes are passed down from generation to generation. This is not just fun, but also a great responsibility that now lies on Max's shoulders. This is the end of the movie. That's all for today. Subscribe and like if you want more videos like this.